Tashi, they're like world raisers, mm -hmm. Rinchen and Dadak here. Let's watch Zog Chen pointing out Rigpa with Tulku Urgen Rinpoche. Mm. I, I already get nervous. I don't know. <laughs> My voice just dropped. I, uh, he's one of the greatest, mm. you know, Tibetan Buddhist masters. He's also the father of uh, Chukinima Rinpoche mm -hmm. and Mingyur Rinpoche, uh, and we met both. Mm. If you're new to Tibetan Buddhism and you don't know what Rigpa is, it's basically, you mm. know, the ultimate. So extremely similar, and in my mind, they're, it's the same. So Brahman, Rigpa, the one source, all-pervading source and field of consciousness that manifests as all things. So these are pointing out instructions. So very deep, if you're not quite ready for this, then prepare your mind. Free the moment of seeing, meaning the very moment of seeing your own nature in the first and second instant or second afterwards, there is no thought. Thoughts have vanished. Is there anything more fantastic than being totally free of thought? Hmm. But even if, even if, though it's just that shock, because there's nothing else in this world that can totally bring a halt to thinking, you can blow up nuclear bombs and so forth and use all different techniques, but nothing really stops thoughts. Hmm. Mm, interesting. But the very moment that you turn your attention towards your own mind, it is evident that it is simply an empty cognizance with no thing whatsoever. Hmm. It's empty, and yet there is a seeing of that because mind is also cognizant, and these are a primordial, original unity. In empty and mm. But the thought uh, happens that if, if we don't believe that this is really it because it's too easy, <coughs> there's nothing more easy than this, just like that. Mm. Okay. Mm. Don't think of anything uh, having totally abandoned thinker and what is thought of. In that moment, you've already seen that there's no thing to see. It's not something you gradually approach like a spirit entering. This is what is mentioned by the word, the phrase, in one moment makes a difference. In one moment, complete enlightenment. In that moment, like this, is the unmistaken Buddha mind. Don't project outwardly. Don't concentrate inwardly. <laughs> Don't keep a state in between. Mm. Totally give up any mental effort. Mm. This is what the, <laughs> an old Menaki man called the, it's utterly or sheer emptiness. You don't need to block your five senses. Not at all. Like this, and just remaining like this, everything is vividly experienced. But if you start to investigate a label, you are involved in thoughts. Hmm. This is what Prabhupada Sambhava said in the Sevenfold Supplication. Um, no matter uh, what appears uh, to your, in the realm or uh, in the field of your vision before your eyes, um, the world, the beings, and so forth, uh, even though experienced, just let it be without uh, uh, any fixation. In other words, mm. disown everything. Mm. The, the dissolving of the Subject and object is the pure form of the deity. Whatever moves uh, uh, or occurs in the realm of your uh, ears, or any sound, all the 
always sounding whether pleasant or unpleasant. <laughs> Just let be in, in the continuity of sound being emptiness. Because no matter what the sounds in your hearing is indivisible from emptiness. <laughs> the uh, empty resounding beyond arising and ceasing is the voice of the victorious ones. <laughs> to not get involved in concepts leading or following. <laughs> By leaving your thinking to itself, it dissolves naturally into Dhamma Dhamma. <coughs> thinking means our thoughts of this and that. If you just let it be, it, it, it naturally dissolves. <laughs> So to your present wakefulness, you don't do anything to it, accept or reject, hope or fear, then it's enough. That is sufficient. So what you naturally need to train in is to not imagine something by an act of meditating, but also not to be distracted for even a second. Being distracted is the same as forgetting. And it is said on the path of distraction, the demons lie in ambush. The moment you look towards and acknowledge the empty cognizance, that is called having recognized. Hmm. And then there is a continuity of uh, empty cognizance, which you don't need to fabricate in any way. Just don't forget it. Once you forget and start to think, then the continuity has, is lost. The moment you look, the empty cognizance is seen, recognized. And then allow the continuity of this seeing to uh, continue uh, or be sustained, but automatically. Then for an ordinary person, again, a thought occurs. Then you remember, oh, I forgot. Then again, acknowledge or notice who forgot and simply recognize again. And again, you arrive back in the state of recognizing your natural face. That doesn't mean sitting and uh, straining, trying not to be distracted. <laughs> it's, like, it's like ringing the bell once and the sound continues. It doesn't mean ringing the bell continuously. <laughs> Once the continuity uh, fades, that means we, we start forgetting. And we, we get involved in the thought. Then again we notice, oh, I forgot, I got carried away. And then, all right, then look towards. And again you are back in recognizing. And again there is a natural stability in a continu continuous state of empty cognizance. We need to train in that short moment, moments many times. But we have learned to live in this life through training. We have learned how to behave how to move about. Mm -hmm. First we have to learn how to eat. So, sorry, I get, this, uh, I get this wrong. We have to train while involved in the activities of, of, of this life. For example, while eating, we, we taste the food, and we start to think about the food, and then notice, oh, I got carried away. Again, recognize mm -hmm. while eating. Mm -hmm. In that moment, you arrive back vividly 
in the state of the essence. Yeah, inside, yeah. inside. Then you, you forget again. Hmm. It gets lost. <laughs> then you, you know, while walking about, moving in your room, you can still recognize the Buddha nature. When you lie down to sleep, but if you're a diligent, also recognize again. When you sit, recognize. Actually, there is no time when you are not allowed to recognize nature of mind, mm. even when you sit on on uh, on the loo. He <laughs> <laughs> said like this: in the naked state of the Dharma Dato, which is unimaginable, uh, relax uh, the inevitable state of awareness. If, if a thought occurs, it arises from yourself and dissolves back into yourself. If any thought that occurs is your own exp expression, it comes out of your own essence. It is only when forgetting the essence that the expression uh, takes the form of a thought. <laughs> but the moment you recognize your own expression, which arises out of yourself, dissolves back into yourself, meaning into the experience of the essence. <laughs> this is what we need to train in, to become used to. <laughs> There's no other meditation, or object, or act apart from that. <laughs> as much as a dust mode, even. <laughs> but if we Forget, get distracted, we are involved in thoughts. <coughs> so please train in this. That is the practice. Hmm. This is what Sri Mutsu taught in the past. <coughs> and today, uh, he has nothing to say besides this. Hmm. Hmm. Dzogchen, the great perfection. So yeah, resting in that state and getting a taste for it. So yeah, the pointing out instructions and yeah, in general, they're very simple. Right? Did you get a taste? The tears flowed. Mm, nice. So it's that pristine awareness that is always perfect. It's always complete. It's always there you know, called by many names, right? The ground, the Buddha nature, the self, the Atman. Um, yeah, that's what we're talking about. The pure light of consciousness that is the very source of the mind, right? So so they stress in Dzogchen again and again that it's empty and cognizant, right? So it doesn't mean a nothingness. It means empty right so the mind doesn't exist inherently from its own side it's dependent upon something and what is that well that's the silence and the stillness but it's still cognizant right so and then you can examine your mind and see well the thoughts because if there's a time and we've all had times even if you're not a meditator there is times where there is no thoughts everybody has that right even if you're not consciously trying to get that, we can see that that's a reality, that there is, you know, an underlying silence to the mind, right? And that meditation is really good to help, you know, realize that, that the mind exists and is dependent upon that ground, right? So even though there's thoughts arising, a bombardment constantly, always a stream of thoughts going, and that's the reality for many people in this world but ultimately the mind at its core and its root is just pure consciousness it's empty yet cognizant and then eventually through meditative practice you can get a taste for that and then see that okay the thoughts are arising you know but they're not me you know and even eventually a sense that okay i'm not thinking the thoughts the thoughts are there and then they arise and then they fall naturally on their own and then as you rest more and more eventually the thoughts stream stream slows down completely because you're not giving it any attention you're not caught up in it thinking that oh i'm thinking this right so uh yeah very profound 
Dzogchen meditation I've practiced, practiced a lot and it's profound. And I love how he stressed that this is what Padmasambhava was teaching way back then. And it's what they're still teaching, you know, to this day in that tradition and lineages because it's truth and it works. There's a light of consciousness, pristine awareness, and that's it. That's the ground, that's your being, that's the Buddha nature. And then with practice, we can rest in it. And it's blissful, right? Because when the mind's not thinking or you're not attached to what it is thinking, then you see that, oh, who am I and how do I exist? And oh, that's how I exist and it's beyond the body-mind construct. Hey, Sabina, got anything to add? No, you're resting in that state. You got it. Got it back. So amazing. Hmm. So thank you so, so much for joining us for this wonderful video and teaching the pointing out of Rigpa, the pristine awareness, which is the foundation, ground, and substrate of your very mind, empty and cognizant. Are you going to practice? Are you going to get a taste for it? Are you going to rest in that awareness? And by doing so, you can raise yourself and raise the world. Thank you so much for joining us, everyone. We love you. Peace.